welcome founder, chairman of the board, and chief executive officer, Fortinet, Ken Z. Thank you, and uh, we're happy to see a lot of friends here. And uh, I'm in the industry for 30 years, three company, and uh, I see the whole space growing a lot. Uh, like compared to 20, 30 years ago, uh, the industry like uh, today is over 100 billion. So the network security is starting to become the biggest sector. It's uh, over 20 billion. Uh, overtaking the endpoint security like uh, 10 years ago, and it's still growing very, very fast. So for me, uh, luckily, go through all these three generation network security. So my previous company, Nesgreen, so we lead the first generation. We call the connection-based security, which is the firewall VPN. And a lot of our company actually uh, in the first generation still existing today. So I sold my previous company, Nesquin, to Juniper, $4 billion. And then started Fortinet 20 years ago. We called a second generation called the content security. Basically, look beyond connection, inside the content, inside the application. Uh, so that's how the UTM, Nigerian Fire, was started. And it's starting to become the, the most network security today. But then industry still keeping changing. And uh, we now in the third stage, the third generation, we call the infrastructure security now. So what was the difference between the first two generation and the current generation? It's the first two generation we call the parameter security. So the firewall, or we call security gateway, deployed where the internet connection and the company internal network on the edge. So because inside the company, you connect by switch. So that's where they only care the connectivity and speed. They don't check what's the content, what's the application. So that's where the firewall, UTM, Nigerian firewall, help you check in the content, the application, the user, the device level. So that's where the primary security is. And, uh, <clears throat> but there's a lot of things changing today. Uh, making the parameter security no longer enough. Uh, because the uh, network security protocol, even after this uh, 30, 40 years in the internet space, and they still run in the same protocol. They still don't go beyond the connectivity and speed. So that's where the parameter security is starting to create some issues. You can see that's how this company here come here today. <clears throat> and the, the device get much smarter. So, and also, the program running on the device also have a lot of content, have a lot, lot of executable, and also a lot of agent-based attack happen. And there's uh, so many ways you can connect in today, uh, making the security more difficult, especially on network security. So that's why we're facing a lot of challenges today. And for all these IT people, you also get uh, so many products, so many companies you have to manage. Uh, so that's all create a challenge for us. And th that's the reason you can see today's attack breach. Uh, so there's a data <clears throat> by IBM. So per attack costs over $3 million. And then there's a billions of attack every year happening. So that's making us have all the job security here. And uh, by the same time, we have to deal with it. How to reduce the attack? How to make the data more safe? Right, so that's where we're facing today. So from the traditional primary security, how we want to go next? So that's where we believe security you know, keeps expanding, especially network security. So go to the one side. That's where the SD1, that's where the 5G, that's all the other whatever go inside the internet. And also, they also need to go internal, go to traditional network space. That's how the Wi-Fi space, that's how the switching, uh, that's inside the company networking, we call the internal segmentation. So that's where we're keeping expanding the network security space. That's, I believe, network security will keep in growing, even already the biggest sector for the whole separate security, but still a lot of potential to keep in growing. 
So that's we talk about the third generation. We call the infrastructure security. Right? So that, that's where we need to keep in deal with a lot of new connection, whether it come from 5G, come from IoT. Uh, we have to deal with a lot of uh, device, bring your own device to the workplace, and uh, all this uh, data go to the cloud. And also all these different applications, right? not just uh, <clears throat> whatever you're using in the workplace, but also a lot of data go to home. And same time, uh, all your appliances get connected. So that's where today's, even the network security, we need to target the whole infrastructure. Whenever there's a connection, we need to see how network security can be applied. Uh, so that's what we call the infrastructure security. And I do believe going forward, we call the security-driven networking. The reason is really up to today, you can look at the network protocol. They're still the same compared to 30, 40 years ago when the internet started. They still run the TCP IP. They still run the routing protocol. So the switch, all this still only deal with connectivity and speed. So that's only working in a trust environment. And then security, you usually deal with what's the bad content or intrusion, whatever, try to block it. You don't deal with all the good traffic. So the network security, network security-driven networking is really how to make it well working together. Like example, so we're a company we put a we call secure SD WAN. Because SD WAN is the first time you look at an application layer. Then you decide how the traffic may go through it. So security is the device go above the connectivity and go above the connection there and look at what's the content, what's the application, what's the user, what's the device, where the traffic coming from, and then make a decision where to block it or let it go through. But they can also deal with the good traffic, make sure they have a different priority, different quality of control. And uh, so that's how secure SD-WAN starting to take off as a huge market today, because that's the first time the networking side started looking on the application to decide how to more efficient do the networking. I do believe once you combine network security together, you can based on the content to decide how you want to deny the traffic. You can depend on the user. You can depend on the device. You can depend on whatever the data come from to make the decision to route the traffic. So that's, I believe, going forward, probably the next generation of internet the routing protocol, the networking protocol, the switching protocol would decide the networking based on the content, based on the application, based on device, based on user, based on the data come from, or how important it is to make a decision how to do networking. That's what I call the security-driven networking, and that's have a huge potential going forward. So that's the first topic I want to share a little bit. The second one actually is about, um, this is the slides come from Garner. So you can see a lot of a company here try to address the cloud. But by this Garner slides, they say the age and the immersive technology will eat the cloud in the next few years. Just like 20, 30 years ago, the PC and server replaced the mainframe. And then five to 10 years ago, the cloud and mobile device replace a lot of PC and server. So going forward, the, the age and your wearable device, immersive device, was starting to replace the cloud and mobile. So that's by the Garner. I do believe there's a quite a lot of good reason behind it. Right? So that's where how we want to address, how we want to deal with the future trend. The reason is quite obvious, right? So that's where, look at how cloud can deal with security. This is the research uh, by NSA. They just published research very recently. So by going to the cloud, you are not at additional security. You are actually more vulnerable. Because you need to deal with, share your data with other tenancy. You have to deal with access control. You have to deal with all the supply chain or other things probably not in your control because you have to put the data somewhere. So that's where the cloud transition do create some issue, security issue. They do add some easy management part, but 
there's other trade-off, right? So that's where you need to deal with both. Both the age and security start getting more and more important. So you can see how this age and security uh, cloud all the integrate together, how complex it is, right? So it, it's really, uh, <clears throat> it's everywhere. But also you can look at the reasons, really, 98% of data generate on the edge, not by the cloud. And also by Garner, almost 80% of data from edge never travel to the cloud. So this has to be working together, right? Otherwise, you don't see 80% data in the cloud. And also, most of the data generated in the edge, you better process there to be more efficient. So that's why I say all this cloud and edge better working together. And going forward, age will play more and more important role. So for the enterprise, it will be better you deal with both cloud and age, your own data center. That's where there's a lot of cloud providers even extend their cloud into the company data center, where the all or some other one. So that's how important it is to address the whole infrastructure, not just the cloud, also need to have the age, also need to have whatever you have in your enterprise environment. So that's how I see this cloud and age will play going forward. So the third thing I want to share is really, uh, uh, like I said, in the last 30, 40 years, network protocol is still the same. They only address the connectivity and speed. But the speed increased almost one million times. Right, from we deal with like a kilobit, megabit, now it's a gigabit, terabit now. But they still run the same protocol. They still only connect you together in the trust environment and uh, nothing beyond the connectivity. But look at how security gateway, network security gateway doing in the last 20, 30, 40 years. From 30 years ago, it's a very simple firewall. We call it connectivity security like firewall decide who can connect, who cannot connect, because attack and not time is very simple. You need to be interactive to be connected to attack it. Because storage is not quite there, very expensive. You cannot put an agent into whatever the device there. And also, there's a limited computing power. So that's where connecting with, <coughs> we call the connector-based attacks working quite well. Then 20 years ago, when I started Fortinet, we call, we need to go to look at the content. We need to look at our inside application because most attacks come from permitted connection. That's how the virus, all the intrusion, all this come in. So that's where the content security, application security, all this next gen firewall, UTM all started. So we need to deal with four or five functions, not just a firewall VPN, but also intrusion prevention, antivirus, the web content screening, a uh, lot of things. But this device also sit together with the network device. They need to be in line to stop the bad traffic. Even if they don't touch the good traffic, they have to be in line to stop the bad traffic. And today, you can see the network security gateway, how many functions, how many applications we have to deal with it. Easily 10 to 20 functions we have to deal with it. So all these functions need a lot of computing power. So that's the challenge we have, really, how to have all this computing power to deal with all this kind of content level, all this kind of uh, data, and uh, which in a very fast networking environment. So there's a huge computing power gap because process network traffic still the same protocol can be very, very easy, very, very fast. On average, Network security, especially on, on a gateway level, they need about 100 times computing power to process the same throughput, same traffic on a switch and routing base. So that's the challenge we're facing today. That's why network security is very expensive, very difficult to manage, very slow, because the computing power. So that's what we do believe. You do need to have a how they deal with like a GPU, AI in the, in the AI space and the TPU, all these things. You need to have some acceleration beyond the general purpose CPU. So you need to have a dedicated hardware, dedicated ASIC chip to boost your computing power, to close the gap. 
Otherwise, you can see the gap will get bigger and bigger. Because now we'll get faster and faster, and the network security will get much slower to deal with all this bad traffic. And luckily, we have SD1. They, they can start to read out the traffic based on application. Hope will be read out some traffic based on the content. That can solve some of the problem when you combine network security together. But the computing gap still there, still have a huge issue. And uh, so that's where you can see there's other things, really, the consolidation we keep in talking about. A lot of IT people say, hey, I have too many products to manage. What's the best way to reduce the management cost and how we can consolidate a lot of things together? It's happening in the network security industry. So 10, 12 years ago, so the top four vendors in the network security count on less than 40% of the total space, both on the unit shipment and also on the revenue. So today, you can see the top four vendors count more than 60% of the total market. So the others keep on reducing probably only about 30% today. So the consolidation do happen in the network security space. And also in the whole cybersecurity space, it's similar. So you can look at the whole industry, maybe over 100 billion. So what kind of platform, what kind of company can help in consolidate? So 10, 20 years ago, the endpoint company, whether it's Symantec or McAfee, I think they tried, right? So it, it's work a little bit, but not quite, a, quite a consolidated a lot. So now the network security company become the biggest sector for the whole cybersecurity space. We are also trying to see how we can help him integrate, consolidate, make him manage the whole security easy. That's why we try to address this whole infrastructure security now. And uh, so what kind of company will be better positioned to do that? You need to integrate. So that's the first step. And also you need to automate. So automation is the target, is the final goal we try to achieve. Without automation, you cannot deal with all this attacking from all different, different, different sectors there. But, but automation needs to come from integration. So without integration, automation will not work in. So that's where we do believe network security has the best position to see a lot of data, a lot of traffic, to deal with endpoint, to deal with all these different data in the cloud, in the age, and uh, eventually helping to the integration to the automation. So we are lucky in a very good position to help in uh, the industry lower the management cost. So that's where uh, <clears throat> The three points I try to share with you, uh, try to talk about it. Uh, like first, so the traditional network security need to go beyond the parameter-based security. So they need to go to the wide area side, go to SD-WAN, go to all the 5G, go to whatever SDN, and expanding from there. And that's all the IoT, all the other things going on there. And then also need to go internally do the internal segmentation, replacing some of the switch, and same time deal with Wi-Fi security, deal with a lot of other devices inside the company. So that's where the network security need to be addressed the whole infrastructure. So not just the parameter anymore, need to go to the one side, need to go to the land side. So the second takeaway is really age and cloud, both are very important. I think cloud in a security angle, they maybe deal with uh, certain functions better, like management, like detection. But if you want to do the prevention, if you want to do the real time, like uh, all this low latency traffic, you have to address the age security. So that's where you need to have a both age and cloud security. And the Garner said age will eat the cloud in a few years. So age do have all the data, and uh, they also, <clears throat> Uh, uh, have a lot of function need to perform in real time. And then the third is about the whole industry, right? So it's, uh, in the security space, it's pretty good. Uh, all this old function never goes away. And then there's a new function, there's a new application keeping adding every year. There's a many point solution to address some part of a security. But in the end, when the customer started using the device, they had to deal with so many different products. So how to do better integration, how to do better automation, 
that starting phase in the whole industry now. And uh, I do believe now is the turn for the network security vendor to see how we can do to reduce all these management costs. So thank you all, and uh, very lucky we all working together to try to solve the problem. Thank you very much.